Sami uh, constitution. Not he is dressed like that, he is Lachesis. No. It is only indicative, a reminder, nothing else. Non-verbal data uh, can be the certain body type of the person, certain physical characteristics of his uh, body, uh, how he is dressed, how he walks, how he sits, how he talks, uh, how he behaves towards the doctor, and so on. How he behaves towards uh, other members of his family during the examination at the medical office, and so on. These are non-verbal data. In our Myasmatic Constitutional Materia Medica, we describe all these non-verbal data that can be uh, indicative of a certain constitution. Another innovation is the background. As I have said before, we are interested in the background of the person. It's important to know uh, the age, the sex of the person, his height, his kilos, his, uh, if his, his marital status, his social status, his financial status, and think what he thinks about himself. Because this is the background of and any constitution or miasm is affected from this background as to his its final picture. Furthermore, persons that have a certain background tend to be influenced by certain constitutions or miasms. And these things are described in our miasmatic constitutional materia medica. I will not go into details. And then we have the essence. Essence together with the full profile of the person. It is very important to be able to identify the essence of a person. In my 30 years clinical price, uh, practice, I tried and managed to uh, identify and specify the essence of each and every chronic constitutional uh, chronic constitution. The essence of phosphorus, the essence of pulsatilla, of lycopodium, of uh, arsenicum, and so on. <coughs> the essence is the center from which every part of periphery uh, comes out. For example, the essence of Lycopodium. Lycopodium is a person who is very intellectual, coward, and tries to project psoric and tries to project uh, an image of a very uh, highly sophisticated person. That is its essence. From this you can get all other information from him. So if you know the essence of Lycopodium, then you have a core and if you find that core, that essence, that main idea in any person, in any individual, you can uh, be sure that you are very close to his similium. You have to confirm this essence with all the other rubrics that he has uh, in the physical body and in psychology. If you 
In our education in Homeopathic Academy, during our education, our main interest is we are focusing on the essences of the constitutions. Because if you have a doctor that has grasped the essences of the main chronic constitutions, then he doesn't need any repertory, any computer expert systems or any keynote because this knowledge of essence will clearly and safely drive him to recognize the similimum to the patient. We use the miasmatic uh, knowledge, the miasmatic knowledge We use the miasmatic knowledge of each and every chronic constitution in order to do differential diagnosis. We don't do differential diagnosis in classical miasmatic constitutional homeopathy according to keynotes or according to uh, if he's cold or hot. We do it according to his essence and according to his miasmatic tendencies. I know that I have dealt for long with theoretical things and with new things and that this may have produced many questions or a kind of confusion. Yet my aim was not to describe in one or two hours the full method of classical miasmatic constitutional homeopathy, but my aim was to give you certain hints and points, the foundations, the innovations of this method, uh, the differences from usual homeopathic methods like repertorizing, keynote prescribing and um, uh, computer expert systems. Because these are mechanical methods of prescribing, while this method is an artistic method. Um, to end this introduction to classical miasmatic constitutional homeopathy, I have to bind all this together and tell you how do we act step by step when a patient comes to us and we apply classical miasmatic uh, homeopathy, constitutional homeopathy. When a patient comes to me in my office, first of all, <clears throat> I ask about his background. That is, age, height, weight, status, marital, and so on. Some things you don't ask, you uh, get the information by asking other things. Second, you ask, you make the allopathic Uh, history, that is, diseases, present disease, present diseases, past diseases, laboratory findings, and so on. You take the case allopathically. What is your present illness, the disease? and what were your past diseases and so on, what are your laboratory tests, in order to diagnose the disease. When you are finished with the allopathic history, what I do is to tell the patient, uh, inform the patient, 
you tell him, okay, you've got uh, ulcerative colitis. Okay, according to allopathic medicine, this is your disease. This is your. Uh, this is the prediction of this disease. What can we do with homeopathy with ulcerative colitis with your disease? We, from our clinical practice, we believe that the causes for this are these, and the uh, cure is uh, the prognosis is this with homeopathy. We can do this. Then we go on and start taking the general characteristics, general physical characteristics. Why don't we start with the psychological characteristics uh, at uh, the state of clinical health? Since psychological characteristics are more important hierarchically because you just can't start asking questions about his psychology when you first meet him. It's going to be strange for him. You've got to start gradually. So you start with physical characteristics. You ask him about heat, about his preferences, about food, about his uh, posture of sleep and so on. Then you go and ask his psychological characteristics, not symptoms, characteristics, that is at the state of chronic illness or state of clinical health. Psychological characteristics. You ask him about irritability, about introversy, extroversy, about fears, and so on. Then, during this process, you have already started noting down certain idiosyncrasies that uh, certain constitutions that uh, seem to be similar. You start writing, oh, he may be a phosphor, or a pulsatilla, or a silica, and so on. And as you go on, you start saying, oh, he's got much more characteristics of phosphorus. And less characteristics of silica, and so on. During the process, you have already uh, find out about his myers. From the rubrics, from the way he behaviors, you start deciding what myers is he more. Is he more psoric and less psychotic and less syphilitic? Or is he more syphilitic and less psychotic and psoic? Okay. This will guide you to certain idiosyncrasies. If you've got a psoic patient, you tend to be driven to psoic constitutions. If you've got a syphilitic patient, you tend to uh, uh, be driven to uh, psoic uh, Constitution or civility. Then you start already from those uh, from this procedure. You have already found not only the myasms but also non-verbal data, and also you have also um, found the background. And then you have the differential diagnosis, the miasmatic constitutional differential diagnosis. And you say, uh, well, uh, I wrote down agendum nitricum. You start 
from those constitutions that are not so much uh, likely to be. Uh, you say, I ask all the rubrics, all the characteristics of Argentum Niticum, and he is not Argentum Niticum, so I take it off. And then you leave only those that are very likely to be the similium. And you start doing differential miasmatic constitutional diagnosis. And then you give the similium. Okay, one remedy at uh, high uh, potency, usually 1M. Okay, and you wait for one month or two months and see what happens. In the meantime, you, the patient calls you at 15 days, two weeks, and to tell you how is he going on. That is how we work in classical miasmatic constitutional homeopathy. This method will be more clear when we start uh, describing uh, constitutions according to classical miasmatic constitutional homeopathy. When we start discuss, describing uh, from the classical miasmatic constitutional materia medica uh, certain chronic constitutions. And it will be more clear when we have a live case taking according to this method and when we present cases, paper cases or video cases with this, from cases taken with this method. I wanted to give you a theoretical knowledge of uh, the foundations of classical miasmatic uh, constitutional homeopathy. According to my opinion, it is the very classical homeopathy, the one that started from Hahnemann, was uh, went a step forward from Kent uh, while he tried to discover the characteristics of the constitution during the state of clinical health. It went a step forward with Ortega and Pasquero uh, uh, as uh, uh, on the miasmatic point of view and I evolved and founded this new method based on miasmatic and constitutional ground with all the innovations that I have presented to you. Thank you for listening and remember the saying black cat white cat, yellow cat, green cat, if it exists. If it catches mice, it's a good cat. What, what's important are the therapeutic results. Thank you.